Hey everyone, before we get into this video, I just want to remind you we're on a road to 133,000 subscribers to match 133 years of Nintendo. So I would appreciate if you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Plus, hey, you know what? We're just trying to get to full-time status here on YouTube, and I just appreciate all of your views and all of your likes as I chase my dream here at the ripe young age of 36 years old. All right, let's dive into today's news. And look, guys... A Nintendo Direct appears to be happening. Now, I always suspected one would happen. We had some stuff floating out there from Ethan Gash, a Kotaku writer, not too long ago, detailing things about possible showcases coming up. And one thing that really stood out was obviously Nintendo doing something, you know, sooner rather than later. Now, we have our first real rumbling from an actual insider in Jeff Grubb, who went on the giant bomb cast last night and just gave a small little tease. So he basically stated something that he hasn't said since February, right? When back when we had our last Nintendo Direct, that he's finally hearing rumblings of a Nintendo Direct happening in July. Now, he isn't sure if it's going to be a mini, a partner showcase, or a general Direct. It's just rumblings, and it's way too early to know. But Nintendo is supposedly doing something in July, which is out of character for them. Normally, it's June. But then again, they also are showcasing demos at Gamescom and PAX West and Nintendo Live. So with Nintendo having a bunch of demo showcases coming up beginning in August, naturally, they had to have a Direct at some point before then. July might make sense, especially as we approach really close to Pikmin 4's launch. Not only do they want to throw some extra advertising behind Pikmin 4, they would want to market what else is coming next. So July could make sense, and it does clear them from the entire June slate and give them sort of their own time period for announcements. So this could end up working very, very well. Now, he did note because it's early rumblings, it doesn't necessarily mean a direct will happen but this is usually the course of things at nintendo you hear some rumblings from companies that are going to be in the direct and then you get more confirmation on what type of direct it's going to be and then confirmation more on the timing of the direct this is generally how the nintendo direct rumor verse works first you hear the rumblings then you hear the type and then you hear the time that's just the way that it goes so right now it looks like we possibly uh, maybe even likely could get a Nintendo Direct next month. If I had to guess, it probably would be of the general Direct variety rather than a partner showcase or something like this because Nintendo doesn't have anything announced after Pikmin 4, right? Like, it'd be different if we already knew a massive slate of games coming. I mean, even last year when we had that partner showcase, we still knew about Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Splatoon 3 and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We, you know, had some known games. At this point, we know nothing after Pikmin 4, so it would make sense. But here's where we can get into what might be in this direct because Nintendo UK did something very, very interesting. They have put up a page. They just did this in the last 12 hours. They put up a page where you can sign up for news about Metroid Prime 4. Now, why would they have you put your email in to sign up to find out news about Metroid Prime 4? Probably because they're about to reveal Metroid Prime 4's release date, maybe even at that Direct. And that would suggest that Metroid Prime 4 is coming this year. Now, here's the thing. I've already heard that Metroid Prime 4 is complete. I heard this from a source earlier this year, and Nintendo is just sitting on it. And that's fine. Nintendo does sit on things, and having Metroid Prime 4 be complete would be great. Now, this page going up on the UK does heavily suggest Metroid Prime 4 is a 2023 game, and that is exciting and just gives us an expectation for that potential Direct in July. But I don't think that that's the only game they're going to bring to the fray. I think we're going to see some remasters, specifically from the GameCube. Things like F-Zero GX Remaster. That's been rumored for a long time. Things like maybe a Thousand Year Door Remastered. And this is the one that people really keep throwing out there, a 2D Mario. I understand the aspect or prospect of wanting a 2D Mario because it's going to sell decently well. And look, there's no guarantee Metroid Prime 4 is some sort of system mover, right? The Metroid's never really been that. Even Dread, the best-selling game in franchise history, wasn't really a system mover and was an October release and not the game reliant to actually carry the holidays. And with no Pokemon game coming this year, 
Nintendo clearly needs something to fill out that holiday slate unless new hardware is coming. Now, if new hardware is coming, then they probably don't need to worry about filling out that slate because the launch games for that new hardware will take care of that. And if that's the case, then it'll probably be a 3D Mario, if I had to guess. That being said, we don't know. We don't know what Nintendo's plans are, but a Direct would be great. If people are thinking, oh, well, Nintendo will announce new hardware on a Direct, it is notable Nintendo's never actually announced brand new hardware generations through a Direct. Never done before doesn't mean the same as never will do in the future. So Nintendo very well could put a hardware announcement in a Direct. I think it's unrealistic to expect it based on Nintendo's history, but Nintendo likes to break history. I mean, when's the last time that we got a general Direct in a July, right? So history is made to be broken. And Nintendo's going to do whatever they think they need to do to maintain momentum at the company. And while they have incredible momentum coming off Tears of the Kingdom, they know that that's only going to go so long, right? That can't carry an entire year. If Tears of the Kingdom could carry sales for an entire year, that would just be unheard of. I mean, there's no game that does that for a whole year. So, you know, as the sales are probably starting to decline from Tears of the Kingdom, even though I know it's still number one, I understand it is time to start thinking about what's going to be coming next. And that's probably why Nintendo dropped a trailer for Pikmin 4 yesterday. And that was a really interesting one because it wasn't it wasn't an E3-esque or a Nintendo Direct-esque trailer. It was more of a teaser. And that could have been a teaser for a big trailer to come later this month or maybe in that Direct. Because, again, they tease that we get to make our own characters. And that is a really cool thing to add into it. So they gave us the basic story set up where, guess what? Alamar and the rescue crew crashed again. Well, I don't know. These guys cannot fly spaceships. I don't know what's happening at this point. They just keep crash landing on planets because they don't know what they're doing. They need, they need, they need expert. You know what they need to do? They need to hire Fox McCloud to come in and guide their ships. And he doesn't seem to have a problem with crashing in the planets. Anyways, the point is they introduced a character mechanic where we get to make our own character. And that's really cool. And that's the character we play with as we're rescuing them. Ironically, Alomar who crashed first and the rescue crew who crashed second. We're out rescuing them. Kind of an interesting twist on things. But that's all the trailer really showed. It didn't really show any real gameplay or anything. So that's why people said it felt more like a teaser than a trailer. And then on top of this, we have this news that Octopath Traveler 2 has surpassed a million in sales from Square Enix. And when you throw that in, it just makes you feel, realize, well, Square could have some announcements for Switch. After all, Square has heavily supported Switch in some regards. Well, we might not be getting the latest and greatest Final Fantasies or the latest and greatest from their bigger IPs. We have been getting the Octopath Travelers, the Triangle Strategies, the Live Alives. So we could see another RPG announcement for Nintendo at this event. And then everyone just keeps hoping for things like Silk Song announcements and, you know, other sort of third party announcements. You know, maybe we finally get to see Hogwarts Legacy for the first time on Switch. People have been waiting to see just even even if you don't plan to buy it, just morbid curiosity. How the heck does this game play on Switch? How does it look on Switch? Is it something like is it going to be something we laugh at or is it going to be? Maybe one of those impossible ports that Switch gets now and then where it's like Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat 1, by the way, is confirmed to come to Switch. We're going to see that at Summer Game Fest. Don't be surprised if we see that in the direct. I'm just, I'm just throwing out there, guys, that there is probably a direct coming and we can start to see certain things percolated in the industry pointing towards a Nintendo Direct. And yeah, guys, the Metro Prime 4 stuff's huge, by the way. I can't, uh, like, we've been waiting for that game since 2017. 2017. Thank you, Nintendo UK, for that. Also, I, I, can, I can throw this, this expectation out. I do think we're going to see the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, the next wave DLC at this Direct, and I think that's just an obvious, just throwing that out there, how stupidly obvious that is. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video. Yeah.